You'll be happy to know closing entries is the very easiest thing you'll do all semester. If you remember, we talked about the net income has to go into retained earnings. And earlier on, we just made a little table that said beginning and retained earnings plus net income minus dividends equals ending. Well, that's all fine and good, but we can't keep our records through little arrows and math equations. We have to get our journals and ledgers and all that other stuff fixed so that we, our ending retained earnings is set up to be beginning retained earnings for the next year. All closing entries then do is to zero out your temporary accounts and those are your income statement accounts and dividends and we close them or zero those out and in essence move the values to retained earnings. What does not get closed are the balance sheet accounts because if you could think about going back to one of the really early lessons, we talked about the balance sheet is a snapshot in one point in time, whereas the income statement is for a period of time. So we need to know how much income we made this year. So we need to start the year at zero. Whereas on the balance sheet, you want to know how much you have today. And so your cash account, for example, just accumulates from the beginning of time to figure out how much you have at any point in time. The journal entries themselves are very easy because you always do the same thing. So the first thing we want to close are revenues. So if you think about it, those have a credit balance. So to zero that out, we have to debit them. So we're going to debit revenue. Then we're going to use the most temporary of temporary accounts income summary. It's on the books for a minute every year and must be kind of upset about being such a lonely little account. But we just use it so that our retained earnings doesn't be doesn't get as messy. There's only going to be a couple things that affect retained earnings. So we're going to close revenues to income summary. We're then going to take our expenses and however many expenses you've got, you put them all in one journal entry. Expenses have a debit balance, so to credit those, we'll zero those out. Take those to income summary. So if I look at my income summary account, it's got 100 minus 78, 22,000. Lo and behold, income summary is the summary of your income. Again, accountants are not too creative. So 22,000 ends up in the income summary account and that's then what you close to retained earnings. And that's how we get that income into retained earnings. Then the fourth thing you have to remember to do is also close dividends. I just have a note here that dividends was 10,000. Dividends has a debit balance, so to zero it out, you credit it, and that will debit retained earnings, which reduces retained earnings, which should all make sense. So you'll always make those four journal entries in closing. Close all the revenues, close all the expenses, close income summary, close dividends, and we're ready to start the new year fresh with zero balances and all our revenues and expenses and dividends. Ending retained earnings is now what's showing on the balance sheet and we are good to go. That adds a couple more steps then to those basic financial statement steps that we talked about a couple lessons ago where we talked about journalizing, doing the general ledger, doing our adjusting journal entries and the financials. Now we have one more thing, which is closing journal entries. After that, it's a good idea to do a post-closing trial balance just to make sure your general ledger still balances. But remember at this point, all you'll have in there are your balance sheet accounts because all those income statement accounts will be at zero. So that way you know you're starting the new year without any problems in the prior year. Time for a quick quiz and you're ready to move on.